<laughs> you thought you were so clever. Ravage this world. Tear them apart. <laughs>
prolong the inevitable. Your death is assured.
go looking for things we have lost. Yes, well, I'm here to tell you. There is nothing you have lost. More than that, there is no such thing as loss. From our earliest days, meeting in garages, living rooms, church basements, to this very moment, our message has always remained. You are complete in yourself. There is no struggle. Struggling. Hey, struggling wakes you up every day wondering how much more you can acquire, how much more you can use, how much more space can you take up in the world. When the question we really need to ask ourselves is how much less can you use, how much less space can you occupy? There is no struggle because there are no distinctions to say that you are wrong, or I am right, is to divide us, therefore we deny there is such a thing as right or wrong. These are exclusionary constructs designed to foster the illusion of separateness. There is no such thing as disunity. There is only the great binding nothingness of things. At one time, we were one. We will all be one again. Transmission from which can be stimulated through the application of certain vectors, very much like a virus. You can't see it. Well, what is it? The veil between form and flesh and the means by which it can be pierced and the two allowed to call me. <laughs> We're each of us blind in our way. Distractions rob us of focus. Technology robs us of memory. Repetition robs us of comprehension. You know the child's game. If you say your name enough times, it becomes gibberish. That holds true for whole concepts, even entire bodies of thought. For example, take take Nietzsche's old line. If you stare into an abyss, it also stares into you. Right? Well, <laughs> that has been rendered meaningless through repetition. It's a refrigerator magnet. It's cliche. It's harmless. But when was the last time you really thought about that? What is an abyss? And if you stare into it, why? <laughs> what about it calls to you? If it stares into you, it stands to reason something in you must also be calling to it. And that, my friend, is anything but harmless. If you reflect on it, so the question becomes, if profound meaning can be robbed of something by so simple a task as repetition, which is more fundamental, which is more true? Your name or the gibberish? Human, you've changed nothing. Your species has the attention of those infinitely your greater. You will surrender your potential, the 
dense and growing forest. Your species will be raised to a new existence.
The cycle cannot be broken. The pattern has repeated itself more times than you can fathom. Organic civilizations rise, evolve, advance, and at the apex of their glory, they are extinguished. Organic life is nothing but a genetic mutation, an accident. Your lives are measured in years and decades. You wither and die. Creatures of blood and flesh, fumbling in ignorance, incapable of understanding. We impose order on the chaos of organic evolution. You exist because we allow it. And you will end because we demand it.
against us. Face your annihilation.
Time, Dr. Freeman? Is it really that time again? It seems as if you only just arrived. You've done a great deal in a small time span. You've done so well, in fact, that I've received some interesting offers for your services. Ordinarily, I wouldn't contemplate them, but these are extraordinary times. Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take you the opportunity for choosing if and when your time comes round again.
Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine.
in consequence.
Naive well. They have already taken root in your own mind. <laughs> Thank you.
He was corrupted to the core. He was Mommy? corrupted to the core. Mommy? He was corrupted to the core. Mommy?
Let me show you. 